Even through the 1950s, the U.S. had not found an effective pressure-triggered sea mine countermeasure. These types of mines could only be countered by traveling very slowly over the minefield, letting the mine's time sterilizer deactivate the mine, and or sailing over the minefield with a ship designed to absorb the mine's blast. All of these approaches were taken immediately after World War II and clearing pressure magnetic mines seeded around the Japanese waterways during Operation Starvation. In 1957, the U.S. Navy modified a Liberty ship which could be used as a sacrificial minesweeper. The ship was designed to detonate a sea mine without destroying the ship or injuring the crew. The intent of this video is to review the YAG-37 project, the ship's unusual features and modifications, its performance and test, and the reason why the project failed. This video topic links well with the videos located in the channel Sea Mine and Sea Mine Countermeasures playlist covering World War II sea mines combat effectiveness, magnetic acoustic and pressure sea mines, Operation Starvation, Operation Neptune, and the Guinea Pig Ship Squadron. This page from a 2023 U.S. Naval Institute website article outlines the need and advantages of the YAG-37, a pressure mine-seeking sacrificial ship. The Navy needs minesweepers which could operate both in shallow waters and deep seas. The new minesweepers would be mine blast resistant by filling the ship's hull with shock-resistant buoyant materials. The ship's vulnerable propulsion system would be shifted above the waterline. This image shows the location of the five cargo holds on a Liberty ship. These will be filled with buoyant shock-absorbing materials. The ship's vulnerable propulsion systems boiler, engine, propeller, and propeller shaft. A standard ship engine and propeller propulsion system is very vulnerable to mine damage. As discussed on this table from a 1944 Mine Disposal Handbook, which outlines ship damage expected from ground sea mines, moored contact mines, and torpedoes. The modified ship is designed to sweep ground influence pressure magnetic triggered mines in this column. A detonating mine will usually damage the propulsion system stopping the engines. These long propeller shafts are easily bent as a mine's blast will lift the ship. Surface contact mines and torpedoes generally do not stop engines. This is a main reason why the modified YAG-37 had its propulsion system shifted above the waterline. Another advantage is the propulsion system cannot be fouled by underwater debris, and this type of propulsion system may have application to other types of ships. The concept is described by William Nicholson of the Navy Bureau of Ships. A test bed was needed to explore this concept, an unsinkable above-waterline propulsion system minesweeper. The YAG-37 was born from an old World War II Liberty ship with the five cargo holds were filled with styrofoam. Four T-34 turboprop aircraft engines were scavenged from a Lockheed Constellation and they were mounted on the ship's 40mm Bofors gun mounts. The engines could be controlled to rotate an azimuth. This image shows the engine in testing on a B-17 and the engines mounted on a Lockheed Constellation. This image shows the four engines mounted on a modified Liberty ship, two on the forward gun mounts and two on the aft gun mounts. The ship could reach a speed of eight knots. The ship was tested over a pressure-triggered minefield and the concept worked as intended. This project had enough merit to order full production as it seemed to be the only pressure-triggered minesweeper that worked. This page from a popular Mechanics Magazine article outlines a propulsion system in an image of the 12,000-ton YAG-37 Swamp Buggy. The four steerable engines powering the YAG-37 modified Liberty ship are the T-34 turboprop engines. The ship can traverse in any direction, even sideways. The ship's engine and propellers were removed and all gaps were sealed. The Navy has not released the purpose of this ship. This Liberty ship model shows the location of the four AA gun mounts modified to accept the turboprops. The World War II vintage Liberty ship to be modified was the SS John Sullivan. This image shows the ship's configuration as of October 1943. Her name was changed to YAG-37 as the ship is now classified as a miscellaneous auxiliary service craft. This page shows specifications in an image of the Japanese wartime military Type E troop transport craft from a 1945 Office of Naval Intelligence document on Japanese small boats. Like the YAG-37, the boat's propulsion is by an air propeller as seen here. It can transport 60 equipped troops at speeds of 10 knots with a 1 to 1.5 foot draft, a scale model of the boat. This page from an August 1957 Seafair magazine article describes the YAG-37's modifications. An image of the compressed air unit, air starter pods, and fuel tanks. All of the ship's engine, ballast, and rudder controls are located in the wheelhouse. No crew is permitted below the waterline. Crew complement is 20, half the standard Liberty ship number of sailors.
This image shows a close-up view of the T-34 turboprop engine mounted on its rotating gun base, the captain's chair. The ship's rudder was also retained to assist in ship tracking if it was ever under tow. The ship's spillage tanks were also retained since the ship rode higher on the water than a normal Liberty ship, the Yag-37 under tow. It's riding so high, half of the rudder is air exposed. The ship's cargo holds were filled with empty 55-gallon sealed drums and styrofoam ping-pong balls. Blast testing showed the 55-gallon drums absorbed the mine's blast shockwave and reduced the magnitude of shockwave traveling through the ship's structure. So how did the Yag-37 perform in sea trials? This page from a 2022 World War II After World War II website article on the Yag-37 project outlines the results of sea trial testing. The Yag-37 project was a failure, as only one of the ship's attributes would be advantageous in the mine-sweeping role and vision. This positive feature did not outweigh the negative attributes observed. The propulsion system was inefficient and the ship was too slow. The maximum speed was around 7 or 8 knots depending on the source. The speed was attained with an empty ship in calm seas without fuel, sensors, or weapons. A normal Liberty ship's 2500 horsepower engine propelled it to a speed of 11 knots. The four T-34 engines were rated at around 6,000 horsepower, but for maintenance reasons, each engine ran at about half this value, or 3,000 horsepower. The Yag-37's propulsion was very inefficient, since its engines produced 380% more horsepower, yet the ship was 36% slower. The propulsion system was very sensitive to the temperature of operation. Less performance was expected on hot, humid days with headwinds. This drop in performance may require unique ship routing requirements. The engines evaluated during the test experienced no vibration issues. In less stringent operational service, though, a loose or out-of-alignment mount would induce large cyclic vibrations into the ship's hull. Sea spray or waves over a normal ship is taken into account during its design and will not affect its protected engine performance. The T-34 engines and propellers would need to be protected from sea spray or waves. The engines would also need to have some sort of a robust anti-icing system. This image shows the significant buildup of ice on the HMCS Brantford. Ice buildup concern may restrict operations of the ship in cold conditions. The four T-34 turboprop engines were very loud. This noise level is also experienced on aircraft carriers, so it's not a deal breaker. The only shining spot of the project was its maneuverability. The ship could maneuver in any direction, including sideways, and could spin. It could dock itself without tug assistance. The project was not successful in meeting expectations and was canceled in 1957. However, using converted Liberty ships for pressure minesweeping did move forward. The merits of the program did press to the next phase where additional ships were ordered but ultimately was canceled due to budget issues. In the end, the Yag-37 was sent over to a minefield to test its ability to absorb sea mine damage. This image shows the Yag-37 undergoing sea mine explosion testing. The ship did not sink and the ship was scrapped in 1958 for $10,000. If you have found this Yag-37 project deep dive review interesting and informative, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.